I am over here in the bee yard. I'll pan out and give y'all a... That's the old one over there. Got them all moved to over here. Mainly to give them some more daily shade and evening shade when I'm here working them in the evenings. So I can see a little better. But uh, fixing to go through them real quick and see if I need to add any supers. I know I've got two queenless. I'm not even going to bother them yet. These right here, when I moved them the night before we left to go on vacation. I stuck a limb right in the entrance so all them leaves and stuff kind of... To me, I don't know if... Because they're right here in the same yard, it kind of made... They reorientate when they come out. <clears throat> this one... Uh, was a nuke over there on the ground that's still queenless has plenty of brood I don't know why they just ain't made a queen yet so put some stuff in there hopefully hoping they'll get some brood made and this one was still queenless as you can see I got a brick standing up that means it's clean and that one's got a brick standing up but then the brick sideways on the back side of the hive means it needs a super soon when I check right before vacation. So I'm going to check those two, but I'm going to pop all of these off real quick and just check them. But I know those two will need a super today. And any supers I add from here on out, I'm going to try to under super. So let's see. That was only a couple of days ago. So I gotta check this one and that one. Let's see where we're at. Bones have hatched out. What had happened on this one, the reason there's so many drones up there, I put a queen excluder. Um, she had started laying up here. I got her back down in the brood chamber. I didn't want her in my honey super, so 
I put a clean excluder on and the brood that was laying in there, I guess was drawn brood. So they've all hatched out. So, still clog up this queen excluder. I've done that before, not thinking, not going in them enough, really. If you go in them enough, as soon as they hatched out, they will uh, they'll get out of there, especially if they've been in there for a day or two, like they just did. Mass exodus. I'm going to give it about another week and then I can take the queen excluder off. I know uh, the honey flow will be over probably three weeks, so I'll give them two weeks. So we're gonna leave a crack right there in the box. Learn that from Bob. So any drones can get out of there in the next little bit. Check this other one, see if it's ready yet. That one is ready.
All righty. And I'll wait. Today is Monday. I'll probably go back in them Thursday or Saturday, depending on the weather. And I'll go through every one of them. And that's probably when I'll take that excluder out. They should be packing that bottom full of honey pretty quick. So I'll take that excluder out. Well, it's off for bees now. Like I said, I just checked them Wednesday. None of them were close except those two. So about every seven days, I like to check them during the honey flow. Um, if they're close, then I can... get some supers put on or at least mark them when they're close but uh i'm actually running out of supers i got a few foundations and stuff like that but now gotta go run in there so i'll catch back up with y'all later all right evening feeding time in here in the chicken coop get their bucket feeder and water i just michaela just filled up Roost is working. I'm probably Saturday going to pull this roosting bar out and clean that out. Hot in here. I got some fly traps. Sticky paper. I got to kind of keep flies down. I got to get some more vents put in. I'll try to get cut me some small little holes up here in the top, right there and there on both sides, even right here. Cut these out. Let some of that hair heat rise out of there. Fed and, fed and water the babies. This is the ones we hatched out. Just a barnyard mix, nothing special. But they're doing good. We got five more. Or we got a whole brooder full of, or an incubator full. Should be hatching in four days, I believe. Got the three girl goats up here and the donkey got them moved. They're not, the grass is outgrowing them up here. So I think in a couple days I'm going to cut it, move them back to this pasture that we've already cut once. And go ahead and top cut this one. I just cut it probably four or five inches off the ground just to get all them seed head down. Which I did to that one, which is coming out pretty good. I may go get the tractor today. I'm going to try to drag that barn out and get all that junk out of it. Coop's good. We went and bought some chickens from a friend of ours. They were trying to download down their flock or cut out on there. So we put this together and had them in here so they could get used to each other. And then we introduced them to the flock. We'll head back here and feed these in the back. All right, what I've done is I've put the landscape right on the back of the tractor here. Pulled out a bunch of that old hay um, bedding pack. This probably still, I really got it from about a foot inside out down the hill and got all that out of there. Um, There's probably still four or five inches, some six inches in there in the, for the backs and stuff. So, but that's my second time I got it out. I did it earlier in the spring and scattered it on this field here just randomly and then drug it with a drag. So this is the second time and I'm piling it. This time I'm going to pile it right there and just let it compost for about another year. I'll probably use it in the garden next spring. Two buckets right there. No, that's three buckets. And I've got probably two more on the pile right here. And I might try to drive forward. I keep back up in there more. The ground's getting slick and wet, so I might try to drive up there and scoop with a bucket if I can get up in there. If not, and I'll let it dry for about another week or so. Maybe Saturday when I move them over here, I'll come out here and try to get some more of that out of there before winter time. 
think I got my mouth on my tractor, so I can't really hold the camera. Leave it with me. When you dump that, I'll get them.
I bought this stuff, fly stuff, to actually put a um, like a rub across that right there. But I didn't buy the. I ain't sure if I want to just pour the whole gallon on it or just spray them because we don't have that many animals. We spray them about every five days, as she was just saying. You keep the flies off of them. Um, it's not a big problem. We kind of keep it knocked down pretty good. So I don't know what I want to do. <clears throat> tore it off? Yeah, and the mineral bucket. They tore it off. big four gallon sprayer I got I'm working good keeping the perelement and the milkweed or whatever down run about probably 16 gallons through it throughout the whole property this year pretty much got it all knocked back I will uh, give it a week or two and go back around and just hit everything a little bit like we got some that perelement right here supposed to be toxic or bad or something for the goats any ruminants I think goats and cows so uh, try to knock it back and they really don't touch it right now when there's plenty of grass but when you get toward the fall when the grass starts dying out or they get all the grass ate down then they'll start eating that prelament and the milkweed and I think the milkweed it's just the blooms that are poisonous I believe it said I don't look around, I got just a few sprouts coming up here and there. A lot better shape this year than we were last year. Which last year I was using a one gallon sprayer and couldn't get very far with it. You keep going to seed, I can get it knocked down next year we should be. Hopefully have a good kick on it. So I got the big tree cut down. I got it pretty much cut up. I'm gonna take the tractor and push it all. I'll probably push one trail up through there and then push it down and push it over here into that trail. I'm gonna cut a little bit right here and I'll work my way back. a little more off this one I want to cover this trail up because I don't know if I can clean it up yet then I cut a couple more big pieces off of this one my goal is I've told y'all before from that big tree back there all of this cleared up besides any hardwoods that are in there which there ain't but a couple maybe one or two and then this whole level all the way around except for that tree that tree maybe that mimosa right there but get all this privy hedge out of here and probably get some of your grass growing back here um i think i'm gonna go back here 
cut some of that. Let's go back there. This is the back side of property. You see the electric right there. But all this right in here, back, about where the big trees are, I'm taking out and then going straight across to the other field. I'm going to take out all this, except for a few hardwoods for some shade. But right now I'm going to work on getting from here to that trail cleaned right there. Cleared off. Most everything will clear off. This hill right here, all the way around. Kind of clear. You can open it. See the garden, the beans right there. Cleared off that up there. Got a big pile of brush. But this is the old road bed. And I'm going to try to start using it mainly, so I've got it cleared up. That's a pile of brush here. I gotta get up there. I've been burning a little bit. Burn van right now, so I can't burn a whole lot. And then I've been clearing this hill off. And the cool thing is, if you're up there where I'm burning, and you look out through here, you can actually have a view back here. So this right here was pretty slumped in. So I cut that hill off a little bit, filled it in so it's level when you come down this hill, because it would tip pretty bad that way. So I've got that leveled off. And I've just been trying to clear this stuff out. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this tree, this privy hedge down, so I can get all this junk hanging over the trail here pulled out of the way. So I'm going to get that cut off. I'm going to cut a bunch of stuff down through there. Probably cut some of this. What I do mainly is I cut it about shoulder high. As you can see, I've done all the way up through there. But it'll die off pretty quick, even. Still roots in the ground, it still gets pretty weak, so I'll leave it for a couple months, and then I'll come through the tractor and push it over. Which I may not mess with this because of that hill. I don't want it to loosen up that hill, let it wash. But, cut all this off, and then start down through here. I don't know how much I'll get cut down today just come out here to work on it a little bit every day So I got that big tree cut down. I got it pretty much cut up. I'm gonna take the tractor and push it all. I'll probably push one trail up to there and then push it down and push it over here into that trail. I'm gonna cut a little bit right here and I'll work my way back. Cut a little more off this one. I'm gonna cover this trail up because I don't know if I can clean it up yet. Then I cut. A couple more big pieces off of this one. My goal is, I've told y'all before, from that big tree back there, all of this cleared up. Besides any hardwoods that are in there, which there ain't but a couple. 
maybe one or two. And then this whole level all the way around, except for that tree, that tree, maybe that mimosa right there. But get all this privy hedge out of here and probably get some of your grass growing back here. Um, I think I'm gonna go back here, cut some of that. Let's go back there. This is the back side of the property. You see the electric right there. But all this right in here, back, about where the big trees are, I'm taking out and then going straight across to the other field. I'm gonna take out all this, except for a few hardwoods for some shade. But right now I'm gonna work on getting from here to that trail cleaned right there. <sighs> 